Hello, my name is Karan Caldwell, and I'm going to try to demonstrate how to do a OTC curve for y'all folks. Okay, what we're doing here is a OC curve for single sampling. plans. Uh, there's many different types of sampling plans. There's single, do double, um, multi, sequential. Uh, OC curves is just a great way of evaluating your sampling plan. Uh, usually it's your percentage of non-conforming uh, over versus your um, percentage of acceptance lot. So what you plot is a, you find a percentage of non-conforming and then you go over and up and that will give you the percent chances of that lot being accepted or not. Uh, usually you're giving three values. You're getting a N, which is your lot size. You're giving a lowercase N, which is your sample size and lastly you're giving an C value which is your acceptance number uh, lot size is basically your population um, this is for cause producers that produce uh, certain materials so uh, you like to think that it's infinite so your lot size may be say 250 but um, that's just for that lot and there can be like a thousand lots produced which is a lot of numbers. Sample size is how much uh, samples you're willing to take out for to represent your lot size and acceptance is how many non-conformities you're willing to accept in your lot before you throw out the whole lot. Single sampling plan refers to that you only take one sample size and if that sample size is either if it's not accepted the whole lot is rejected. If it is accepted the whole lot is uh, accepted and goes to production. Um, usually when writing a OC curve they give you a uh, n value, so let's just have an n value of uh, say three thousand. Uh, sample size would be a hundred. Hundred's a nice easy number, and number of acceptance is uh, let's say two. Okay, since we done that, uh, you want to start off with a graph, simple graph. Sorry, I am not an artist. Uh, this is your percentage of non-conforming, as I said. This right here is your, I'll turn the paper over, percentage of lots. Accepted. Then you just want to put some numbers on here. Ten. Since it's a percentage, you go up to a hundred. Ran out of space. Okay, on this axis right here, you have um, your, as I said, percentage of non-conforming. Usually, you want to go up to seven steps, because anything above seven is really not necessary. One, oops, one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, where I like to start off is I like to make a little table. So as I said, I usually start off with uh, your non-conforming. Since we want it to seven, it will be a percentage. Because these numbers right here are percentages. So you have 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 13%, 14%, 15%, 16%, 17%, 18%, 19%, 20%, 21%, 22%, 23%, 24%, 25%, 26%, 27%, 28%, 29%, 30%, 31%, 32%, 33%, 34%, 35%, 36%, 37%, 38%, 39%, 40%, 41%, 42%, 43%, 44%, 45%, 46%, 47%, 48%, 49%, 50%, 51%, 52%, 53%, 54%, 55%, 56%, 57%, 58%, 59%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 91%, 92%, 93%, 94%, 95%, 96%, 97%, 98%, 99%, 100%, Okay, and then usually next I put our sample size of n, which was a hundred. And because I'm lazy, go down. And then you have a MP value. The MP value is basically your sample size multiplied by your number of um non-conforming. So this would be one, two, three. See, and that is why we chose a hundred. Sorry, forgot to move over. That's why we chose a hundred. Much simpler. And then you have a probability of acceptance. Your probability of acceptance is based off of your acceptance number and your sample size. Okay, so define this probability of acceptance value right here. We have to use our handy dandy, sorry, let me flip this over. Poison distribution chart. Um, the reason why we use poison is because, like I said, we um, assume that the population is infinitely um, growing, so it's fine to use this. And to what you do is, since our, you use your MP value, 1, so you go to 1 on here, 1, and then you look for your for your acceptance value, which is 2 here, and then we go over all the way up to 1. So as you see, you get a 0.92 value. 0.92. Um, you do this for all the other ones. So for 2, you go to 2, 3, you go to 3. But I already know these numbers since this is not my first time taking this. Forgot to add volume on the first one, so yeah. Okay, and these are your lovely numbers. I seem to start scribbling out of nowhere. But, um, sorry, this runs to this, but to turn this into a percentage, you just multiply by 100. Really simple stuff. Okay. So since you have this value, and you have your this value, you can use these two to graph your numbers. Uh, so use this for x, and this is y. Oh, oh should have kept this name, x. Okay. So since our number was 100, we have really simple is one and then you go all the way up to 
92. Mark that. Next number was 2, and that corresponds to 67.7. Somewhere around here, 342, 4, was 23, yes, I remember that off the top of my head, 12, was, I mean 5 was 12.5, this was 6 something, 6.2, And this is basically three. Then you get a nice curve. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. So let's say if you um, had two percentage of nonconformities, you would go up to this line. I'm way off. This should have been like right here. And then you go over and you see with 2% nonconformities, there is a 67.7% .7 chance that this whole lot will be accepted or not. See, that's what makes it so great for evaluating uh, certain sampling plans. Um, if you had a double sampling plan, it would just be another curve under this one. Then you would use both of them to find your percentage. Um, the more you have, you just add them up and then you get that percentage number. Um, for some interesting tidbits, let's say that there was the sample size was decreased. So... If your sample size was lower, then your graph will look something like this. If your sample size was um, increased, then it will look something like this. If your uh, acceptance value was um, also increased, you would get a line going more out, and then it will drop more. Something like that. Well, there you are, a beautiful OC curve, like I said, and um, hope you have a great day. Goodbye.